and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to a brand new week here on the channel. And let's all hope that it's a better week than the last one was. That was a really, really tough week that we've had. And today we're going to be talking more about the defeat to Real Madrid, which wasn't good. We're going to be focusing there on the defensive side of the team. Cancelo in particular is in the spotlight. We're also going to be talking today about these huge Xavi rumours here about his future. Is he indeed about to change his mind? If he does, what will it mean for the club ahead of next season? And I also want to talk to about these highly convenient Rafa Marquez rumours. Let's talk all about that. It's coming your way. So let's do it. Because I do today, guys, want to give a very special super thanks shout out to Jesse, who is indeed a really, really big help here on the channel. But it's such a shame that we were unable to get the result that we so desperately wanted in last night's game. But still, really appreciate there the great support nonetheless. But let's talk about that Real Madrid defeat. Because I just want to start by saying that so many people will tell you there, if you complain about the refereeing decisions from last night's game, they will say... Oh, you're making excuses. You're making excuses there for the team, for the coach, for all of this kind of stuff. Now, I am more than happy to admit... Barca have their faults. We're going to be talking about lots of them today. And we have seen them lay bare over the last two games. That's why we're going to discuss them. But just because we've made mistakes as a team and the fact that we've been poor at times, it doesn't mean that we also haven't suffered from terrible refereeing decisions. Both things can be true at the same time. Barca need to do more. Barca have not been good enough this season. But the officiating, particularly in La Liga... It's awful, so we can highlight both issues. But let's talk here, though, about Frankie de Jong, because there were some sad scenes before halftime last night. Frankie had to be stretched off yet again due to another ankle injury. It was just like the one there against Athletic Club at the start of the year. He looked in real pain and discomfort as he went off the field to be replaced by Pedri there. But luckily, the injury does not seem as though it's going to be a really serious one. Reports right now say that he should be all fine in say four to five weeks time and of course with the season all but over now anyway at least for Barca that is good news overall that Frankie there hasn't done anything majorly serious but I think the bigger concern right now is the type of the injury because this is now the third time that Frankie this season has suffered a right ankle injury and quite clearly there's a bit of a problem there there is some sort of weakness in that right ankle that may be something that we need to look further into I don't know whether surgery or anything like that is being considered right now, but this also comes at a time, let's not forget, when there's going to be rumours about Frankie's future at the club this summer. Whether the time is right here for Barca to maybe think about offers coming in, to think about maybe cashing in on him, whether Frankie would accept leaving the club, of course. And I guess these kinds of injuries here, this problem with the ankle, that's not really going to help the club. That is not going to help there maximise his market value in terms of the offers that may indeed come Barca's way this summer. So right now with Frankie, not good news overall, and such a shame to see him injured in yesterday's game. However, guys, let's talk, though, about some of the goals that we conceded against Real Madrid. There were three of them in total, just days after conceding four against Paris Saint-Germain. And I think, personally, before we even go in to individual errors, there are still big mental concerns I have about this team, and especially the way that we set up. It's been an issue all season, because, again, last night, we took the lead in the game. Ten minutes later, we concede a penalty. In the second half there, again, we take the lead. Moments later, we concede the equalising goal. And this happens so frequently at Barca, whereby we feel like we're playing well, we feel as though we're doing good, we get an important goal, we feel as though we're making strides in the game. And then what happens? We just switch off. And this is something, like I say, that we have seen throughout the whole season there. No matter who we're playing, no matter what the kind of game is, we are unable to keep that level of focus, to keep that level of concentration. And it feels as though whenever we take a lead, whenever we get ourselves just one goal... We think that's enough. We take our foot off the pedal and you can't do that. One goal is never going to be enough, especially given the way that we've been defending throughout the season at this stage. And that brings me on to Cancelo because genuinely, 
guys, I cannot believe what we saw from Cancelo at the Bernabeu. Because let's remember, we were looking for a response from him after the PSG game, which was horrific from Cancelo. Chaffee kept him in the team. Chaffee gave him there another opportunity to show what he can do. He made the same mistakes. And I don't just mean, oh, they're roughly the same errors. He made exactly the same mistakes as he did against PSG. It's a carbon copy. You look at the move here. When it was against PSG, it's Dembele at the back post that Cancelo left wide open their basic amateur kind of error. And then in this game against Real Madrid, it's the same. The ball is played there right across the box. As a fullback, in that situation, you've got one job. Literally, you only have one job. Keep an eye on your man. You've got one player there to mark, one person to stop getting to that ball before you do. And again, he's just letting go. He's switched off. He's lost focus there. And it is so, so poor to concede that goal just days after we did against PSG. It's awful. But it wasn't only that from Cam. Cancelo, all night long for me, he was an absolute liability at the back. He gave the ball away in a truly horrendous position there in the build-up to the penalty that was given against us. And throughout the whole game, he made Lucas Vasquez look like a world beater. Vasquez seemed to be running rings around us there defensively, and Cancelo just could not deal with him. And I think a lot of people right now, guys, they're getting nervous about the thought here of extending this loan deal. Because there's no denying this season, on the loan deal that he's been here on, Cancelo has helped us. He has been very very good going forward. He's popped up with big goals, big assists there in the final third, and he is a good player offensively, no doubt about that. And as a loan deal, he's helped us, given that we haven't paid anything for him, only his wages. But I think right now, when you look into the summer with the limited funds that we have, are we really talking about spending 25, 30 million euros here on Cancelo, a player that turns 30 next month, and he's not really going to change, is he? He's not going to magically remember how to defend, how to be focused and play in these situations now. This is the player that he is. This is what we've got. This is why Pep Guardiola would not have him in his team. He would not trust him there in a Man City defence and that is a team there that will only accept the very best. They don't want Cancelo. The question is do we? But let's talk about next season. Let's talk right now about lots of the rumours that we are hearing regarding the coaching position at Barca because there's been so many people asking me about these Rafa Marquez rumours there. There are some people who are very, very intrigued by, you know, maybe you'd like to see Marquez at the club to see what he could do as the Barca coach but there are plenty of people here who are really honestly scared by these Marquez rumours and look I think he's done actually a very good job at Barca Athletic this season I think it's also great to see the work that he's been doing with the younger players at the club that's exactly what you want there from a potential Barca coach but let me just say right here and now, all these things about Marquez being lined up as Xavi's replacement, he's the only man the club can really look to, I believe it's all nonsense. I do not believe that Marquez has ever been considered by the Barcelona board right now, because I don't believe any of these rumours. Because I think inside of the club, they want to make it seem as though... Marquez is our only option. It's either Xavi continues at the club or the only option we have is Rafa Marquez because of the club situation. So let me just say there, oh, because of our situation, because of our financial problems, we can't afford somebody, say, like Hansi Flick. We can't afford to bring him in for, say, seven million and his staff for the season. But we can afford, though, to spend millions on George Mendes' clients. That's fine. But we can't afford any other coach apart from Marquez. It's nonsense. And I think this is all designed here from the club to put pressure on Xavi, to put pressure on the Barcelona fans as well, to ultimately say, well... We need Xavi then. We need Xavi to continue at the club. Because if it's between him and Marquez, well, there's only probably one winner, isn't there? You want Xavi. You want the experience. You want somebody there who has at least shown some signs there as the Barcelona coach. And I think that tactic, it might be working. Because now we're hearing Xavi saying, actually... I'm open to staying. He's apparently now going to meet with the club in the coming days. There's going to be a meeting there between plenty of the big decision makers inside of Barca. And apparently right now, Chavi's staying. It's a real, real possibility. Now, the one thing that he would want, though, and the one thing that he's really intent here on saying in this meeting is that he wants guarantees. Ahead of the summer here, he wants assurances from the club with regards to signings, maybe even power over those signings there in terms of strengthening the squad to where it needs to be. But I think my biggest question here when it comes to Chaffee is, is he staying for the right reasons? You know, does he have the motivation within him to still be here, to still see an eye on this project? Or would it simply be... 
almost like a caretaker kind of role. Is he just staying for one more year to see out the final year of his contract until the club in 2025 can go in a different direction? Because that actually looks like a disaster to me, if that's the case. If we're just keeping Xavi on only one more year, everybody knows it. Is that going to work? Because I think Xavi here saying, oh, I'm going to leave. And obviously then off the back of that, Barca improved in form. You know, the pressure went down, the momentum went up. We had a good little run there when Xavi said that he was leaving. But I think over the course of an entire season, if we went into next season thinking, oh, well, Xavi, he's only going to be here this year. It's one more year of this. I think it would be flat. I think it would be absolutely flat to the ground. We would need something more here. I don't think Chaffee can just stay here to help out the club because they think, oh, well, the only other option is Marquez. Chaffee's got to stay. Chaffee's got to stay here because he believes in the project, because he sees himself here as the leader of it still, not because he's doing the club a favour. Do not feel as though you owe the board anything. It's their job to run this club, ultimately, and they haven't been looking for any other coach. All they've been doing is sitting back and thinking, please, Chaffee, change your mind. They haven't looked at other options. They haven't spoken to people, all they've done is wait and wait and wait on Chaffee and now does Chaffee feel as though I've got to help them out, I feel as though I really do need to stay now, just one more year to get them to 2025 we can't afford the coast we can't afford here to just meander along and hope for the best we need a plan, we need a project, we need to stick to the project that we have and we need everybody to be on board with that and that is what we are gonna find out. So please guys, I would really like to know in the comments down below here, what do you make of these Chavi rumours? And why do you believe now we're starting to hear that he is gonna stay? You know, is it a good sign that he's changed his mind, that he feels maybe reinvigorated at Barca right now? Or is there more to this? Does Chavi feel as though he's got to help out the club? Is he staying here for the right reasons? Do let me know in the comments down below. Let me know how you're feeling right now, and we will talk soon. We will talk lots, lots more about what we are hearing. Thank you indeed for all of your support, guys. But until next time, as always, Vizca, Yelbasa.